Welcome back to the channel guys hope everybody is doing well it's been a minute since the last video because i've been working on this pretty much full time over the last couple of months here guys is probably a world's first actually this is a standalone mesh core device running on esp32 p4 so this is the new high power cpu from um, expressive so you know we've been using esp32 for quite a long time and it's always had kind of some issues with performance for like graphical displays but as you can see now this is is completely game changing this is an actually properly usable device which you can just you know literally just use literally like it's a smartphone it's pretty crazy so so just to clarify this is not an android device connected to another node this is actually a pure standalone lower device with its own software and own firmware running on this device here so you can see here we've got notifications we've got all the little apps which i'm going to run through and show you what these are about this is very early days stuff but it all works and i'm using this as my daily driver at the moment a few of you will have seen this pop up this device um and kind of wonder what it is but this is basically what i've been using um for the last sort of couple of weeks as i've got this firmware kind of up and running so this is actually a lilygo t display p4 um it's a new kind of model they've they've brought out which is very much like a sort of development board kind of orientated thing that just happens to obviously have the display on the front so it's not inherently designed as a as like a sort of smartphone device i think that is something that is going to be coming later um however it is a an amazing platform for kind of you know working on this um with an idea that you know eventually we're going to have a device that's that's more um smartphone kind of oriented so you know there is a built-in battery in here um, it's kind of got this uh, like rubber back. There's even a camera on the back as well. You can see, obviously, there was a camera. There's a camera app down there um, as well. But what I really like about this is the fact that it's got a an amazing OLED display. So this is like it's very phone like, and just it everything just looks absolutely lovely on this. It's like it's just like using a sort of miniature version of a modern smartphone really um but however we can we can do loads of clever stuff with this that obviously um you can't do with a smartphone necessarily because everything is actually kind of embedded in here and you haven't got google you haven't got all the rubbish on here um you know running other notifications and you know potentially ai watching what you're doing and everything else so this is this is something where i see you know things going in terms of you know some hardware for kind of people that want um, very specific kind of device usage like having a mesh um, based radio system uh, running on these little handsets and you know the potential for kind of having this in lots of different form factors including like rugged and kind of you know intrinsically safe sort of stuff as well you know you're going to be able to do some really cool stuff with this so the idea is i've kind of come up with this um this idea that basically what we will have is we'll have uh, a thing called mesh os and i'm just going to reset this now to show you what i mean so basically it will just start up as a mesh device that can be used for lots of different things. And this software could be customized for various different use cases. Um, this is kind of more of the like con consumer end uh, facing one where basically Meshcore, we have a Meshcore app built in. Let me see, we've got <laughs> Nismo is well on it today. Um, I've, I've built a Meshcore app on top of this. And basically at the moment, what it does is it allows you to kind of do you know, basic um, channel messaging and that sort of thing. So, you know, you can actually change change the settings up here as well. See, some parts of this, the screen's a little bit not quite as sensitive as it could be. Um, it's all kind of work in progress. So we've got like radio settings here. This device actually has an RF switch in it, which is quite interesting. So at the moment, we're actually running on an internal antenna, not that antenna that I've just pulled off. And 
obviously Lily Go have chosen to use MMCX connectors for this particular device rather than SMR. I suppose it's to keep the size down. Um, but you can potentially you can basically s- switch between these two um, these two antenna outputs, which is really cool. Now RF one I've got here is actually ported to connected to an internal antenna so you know like we had with the t-deck you can you know m- many people kind of dis- disconnect the internal antenna of the t-deck and then you know connect an sma and of course that is great but it makes it no not really any longer pocketable so this is really cool with the fact you can switch between an internal and an external antenna just in software so you can see here i've got all the other um, radio settings here that have just been set up for um uk narrow and i'm using the internal uh, internal antenna so i've made a few menu options here there's going to be more coming um, and if we go back out of here as well you can do this sort of side swipe and then we can go into our public channel and you can see here we've got nismo's message there showing and what i've done here is i've just basically put on timestamp rssi and signal to noise ratio on the bottom of here so how i've managed to get meshcore running on this because this device is actually uh it's not compatible with the um arduino sort of framework so I've had to basically restructure MeshCore to work on this particular device. But, you know, the MeshCore code is so well written and so um, easy to follow that it's very easy to actually kind of, you know, embed uh, MeshCore on anything. That's the great thing about it. So we've got MeshCore running on this and I'm sort of slowly kind of adding the features in, all the different features in. We've got channel messaging, we've got, um, you know, advert decoding and all the various different types of um, packets that MeshCore uh, can use we're decoding so this is the the basic chat app we've got running and you can go in here you can go on the keyboard and you can just you know tap it's pretty responsive it could do with a little bit of a wider screen here just to you know be able to um you know two hand double finger typing that would be pretty good if if Liligo could come up with a um a device uh, have a bit of a wider screen that would be good um i've implemented emojis to this as well because everybody loves an emoji and that is one of the biggest bugs bears with any of the standalone stuff you can't do emojis <laughs> so i've put emojis in there that was that was actually one of the hardest things to to get working believe it or not the, the emoji side of things it's it's crazy but anyway you can do like um replies just single tap replies like that and um yeah you can you can just reply and, and do all sorts of things so we've got the channel um the channel list here as well so you can add new channels um remove them from there so we've got all of our channels all the notification badges you know just all, all work seamlessly there's also badges on the front screen as well so the home screen so when messages come in i think we probably saw that at the beginning of the video when messages come in you get a little badge on the top there that shows that a new message has come in like that there we've got notification pop-ups which are done throughout so this is kind of a free rtos system where everything's running as its own task so it's kind of fully multitasking and it allows you to um, you know use multiple apps at the same time so if we look at the terminal app here i've got set up this you see that that there was a slight delay there because we've got quite a bit of quite a bit of history going on um you know i'm still refining how this all works but basically that's super small <laughs> um and it looks really cool in all the different colors though so you can see all of the packets coming in and this is raw like as raw as it gets you'll see adverts multiple times on here as they get repeated through your repeater so you can really see what's going on and you can even use this as like a as you check to see you know what's what's heard and it's it, i actually quite like having a full-blown terminal output just in the background so that you can really see what's going on um and you know so that is that the ability to run commands in the terminal is something i'm going to add as well to this because i have got that working on the on a t deck which i'm going to show you at some point as well um you know proper management over a terminal using the t deck is is really cool so that's the terminal side of things and um, you might have noticed we've got like signal bars at the top here as well. So this is like mesh mesh signal. Um, so what it will do is it will just any packet, whatever packet it is, it will just listen to that and then it will create a, um, you know, it will give you signal bars based on that SNR that it's just received. But this is working really well and I find it really useful just to have a glance down, you know, you just fire the device up and just see, uh, am I in range? Yeah, 
okay, I've got some signal there. Of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to get into the mesh, but you know. So the other thing I've been working on here, a little applet, which is map. Nismo's getting a lot of air time in this video. So we've got map as well. If you we tap on the map, I've basically got this kind of like full size UK map at the moment, which I quite like. Um, it, it kind of shows all the nodes that it's received in green there and it just dots up so you leave this running a little while obviously we've just rebooted so you see like loads of green dots up the country which is super cool so this is the style of the map that i'm going to be going for and then we'll have obviously some tiles to get closer in and stuff like that but to be honest you know i just like to see at a glance where people are i'm not bothered about seeing what road <laughs> road they're in or anything else um despite what some of you might think that i stalk people and drive around and find nodes but I think those days are gone actually because we've got so many users now it's not not so exciting when a new one pops up no i'm only kidding now the other thing we've got is the discover list and that opens up and you can see here we've got you know a few repeaters that have been picked up so far um we've actually got I've, what i've done here is i've got the id of the repeater there you can see or the first byte id but i've also got a little via um, on there as well so that will show you if you hear it from more than one source um, you can actually kind of, you'll get a list of, of nodes. So if you're in a higher place or if you connect this to a big area outside or something like that, you'll see via, you know, all the repeaters that have that you've actually picked that up from, which is quite cool because when you're out and about, you, it's interesting to know what repeaters could be around and you can do that by seeing, um, you see, look, there's DA there. Another one's been picked up via DA. So that is the discover list. So obviously I mentioned the camera as well. So we've got a camera app, which I've kind of just, just built out. It's not bad. Um, it would actually be probably okay for um, scanning QR codes. Um, and then I've kind of built on this like this shutter system here. It will save the um, the, the image to the SD card. Um, potentially we could send that over Laura if, if we if we put it on not over the mesh, of course, but um, put it over um, a very high speed mode or something, just like zero hop. So if you've got another one of these devices, you could send pictures maybe backwards and forwards. But it's probably not really fast enough, um, Laura, for that. Of course, though, this is an SX1262 in here and my radio manager that I've built for this uh, can support all the other modes, not just lower. So you can do lots of different things. Uh, exactly like what Radiolib does, but you could switch to a, like, a real high speed FSK mode to send um, pictures from one person to another, obviously at short range. Um, it all use ESP now, maybe. That, that's another way of doing it. So, you know, there's lots of possibilities with this, um, this device. Um, we've got like a system set in here, which is based on Lilygo's stock system which they've got um you know for uh testing the various things you've, if you've ever installed one of their factory firmwares um you'll see um you'll see that there but obviously the esp32 if we go into you know, go back out of that if we go into battery health um, we can see here, anyone wondering about power consumption, um, the highest power consumption with this with this screen um, running is 362 milliamps. So it's quite a lot. Um, the lowest at the moment is 202 milliamps. I've seen that down to about 170. Um, and I've, I've added this little graph here to track. But we're not really doing any power saving stuff on this at the moment. I'm just getting things running. Um, and then power saving will come later. And I reckon we'll be able to get this down very low with um, with the sort of like light sleep. Um, so it will still be sleeping in the background. But you know, lower packets will be able to wait this up. It does have um, the lower. I don't think the SX twelve six two is connected directly to the the CPU in this. It's, it goes via um, another like sort of bus, but. It's not a problem. You, you can still kind of work around that. This does have sound as well. It's headphone socket, so you could make a little MP3 player out of this as well or have an app that can do that. There's also a speaker here in the bottom. So notification sounds, no problem. That works. Obviously, you've got an SD card in there as well, so you can store um, sound files on there as well. Proper hardware on-off switch on the side as well, so that's really nice. And then, you know, you've got user buttons up there, two user buttons there, up and down. Then you've got a reset button and a... Um, the boot button which currently is doing my kind of power off and saving i've actually got this kind of all all day or always on display thing so if you go to the home screen um, and we go back out of that and then you just hold this button down 
to take it down to one step. That just saves a lot of energy, but you can actually have your clock on. So it's quite nice when it's on charge at night. You can just have that sitting there and then it acts as a little kind of always on display, just a bit like your phone does or modern phones with OLED displays do that. So yeah, been super busy with this. Absolutely loving getting back into the embedded computer stuff um, a bit more. Now I've had a bit more time to sort of do it and everything else. But yeah, MeshCore is going from strength to strength. Of course, in the background, we just kind of sailed past like 10,000 users on the map. And obviously there's, there's probably more because not everybody adds themselves to the map. I love these notifications, the way they just kind of ping in. It's just, it's so cool. I don't know why I get so excited about it because it's just what a phone does, but it's something cool about having your own um, your own device that's kind of, you know, you know what it's doing behind the scenes. There's nothing nothing going on in the background that you don't know about, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I've been super excited to tell you about Mesh OS. Um, it's been this video, I've just been meaning to do this video for, for quite a long time. Um, and yeah, I've just been kept tinkering away with this. And if, you know what it's like if you get involved in this stuff, you can just, you can just lose days, weeks, months. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's been great to finally kind of tell you about this stuff and, and and kind of let you know about you know where my little corner of this kind of project is is kind of is going at least so yeah guys um hope you've all been enjoying meshcore i'm seeing you know the, the messages in this area are sort of like pretty much continuous so it's hard to keep up sometimes but yeah I, I think everybody's um kind of enjoying it and having a lot of fun and i've seen quite a few new users pop up recently as well so shout out to you guys don't forget to join the discord if you haven't already and subscribe and like this channel so the meshcore channel anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed this one and um, yeah the future's bright it's not orange it's meshcore <laughs>